So I'm all about helping you amplify you as the brand authority. The world has changed since pandemic and it was changing me for pandemic, but pandemic hit and everything went on steroids to now you are the brand authority. And today I'm going to break down some things to help you do that. But I'm going to help you do that by building your own media empire. Do you know you can build your own media empire? And it doesn't cost you near what you think it would cost you. I'm going to start you off with a little story. I want to take you back to Richie being a little kid, just a small little kid. One of the biggest thrills of my family was watching two shows on Sunday nights. This will date me. But we would get together first for Mutual Omaha Wild Kingdom, Sunday nights. Marlon Perkins and the alligators and all the amazing animals. But the show that I really love, even more than that, was The Wonderful World of Disney. Walt Disney. Uncle Walt, as many people called him after a while. The creator of Mickey Mouse and Space Mountain, all these incredible things that we now know and love. Walt had Sunday nights and the beginning was always a setup to get ready for the main feature. Walt would start off behind his desk in his TV studio office, and he would walk out around, and sometimes he had a model of something new at Disney. Sometimes he had some of the drawings up on the wall, and he would take you into the next evolution of Disney. But Walt would always vision cast and talk about the power of Disney, and the number one thing about Disney was the mouse. Everything revolved around Mickey Mouse. Walt Disney made it very clear, going back to values that we heard earlier, the values of Disney were, in the end, the mouse wins. Keep it on point. As they built the empire, Mickey would always be number one. But that power of that brand, uh, the whole branding became Walt and Mickey, Walt and Mickey, Mickey and Walt. There are statues, as you walk through Disney's, where Walt is standing with Mickey. You could not separate the two as being the brand identity of Disney World, Disneyland, Disney Euro, and it went on and on. What if you could be the new Disney? What if you really could actually be that influential in your market space, in your industry, as a go-to expert that outshines the other in there? Because you're more laser-focused. And you know how to leverage the media. Do you realize that Sunny Nights was a conglomeration deal with ABC and Disney because Disney needed funding for their park? And it was basically a paid advertisement every Sunday night. And Walt Disney and Sunday Night, Wonderful World of Disney, went on for year after year after year. And they built a brand identity that is so strong to this day. If you watch the beginning of those episodes, if you watch Walt in his 15 minutes setting up, and then Walt would turn to the camera and Walt would say, and now here's our feature presentation. Go back and watch those. Most of the time, Walt's 15 minutes were more powerful than Davy Crockett. Then whatever they ran that night as a feature, Walt was better. What if you could do that? We're going to get into that today. First of all, you got to do a mindset with me. Everyone's got to take a mindset here today. Everyone's got to change this in to thinking that you are the brand. As Walt and Mickey were the brand, you are the brand. We now live in a media world where we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We're on YouTube, TikTok. We're everywhere. And you do want to be everywhere. That's part of the amazing shift now that we don't need ABC or NBC you now have media access here. But the different mindset is we're pushing everything out. We're, we're pushing everything further and further out there, and it's not connected. People see this post. People see that post. People see that post, but it's not connected. Today we live in a media world where NBC has CNBC, NBC+. Plus. They have the peacock, and it goes on and on. They have little baby versions, but at the center of it is NBC. At the center of you and the brand is you. You are the actual center of your media universe. You wrote a book. Your book is not your brand. You're the genius that wrote the book. 
and the book draws people to you. You are the genius of that blog you wrote, not the blog itself. So the blog and all your social media, everything you create needs to point back to you now. It needs to show that you are the center so people will hire you, not just buy your book. They won't just read your blogs. They're going to call you and follow you and hire you. You are the genius of everything you do. Kentucky Fried Chicken has been another one of those mainstays in Americana where people know KFC. The original Colonel was so popular, he did not want to be the face of KFC back in the day. Actually, the guy that founded Wendy's, Dave, Dave worked for the Colonel. Dave was the marketing guy that first pushed, pushed the Colonel out the door and said, you need to be the face. You need to put on the bow tie. You need to put on the, you know, the mustache. He was that way 24-7. Dave pushed him out to say, you are the Kentucky Fried Chicken Man. And the sales went through the roof. Over the last several years, we have seen other people try to mimic, try to get in the costume to take on being the Colonel. And they have pulled each one off and canceled that ad campaign because they are not the colonel. They are a fake colonel, and no one wants it, but they want the real colonel. Recently, I've seen ads. This is so powerful that the Brand Authority 6. Recently, I've seen ads where you see the logo of the colonel, and the mouth is moving, and it's the original colonel from old audio sound bites talking about his chicken, talking about the clients. He's so powerful still today. His voice and the logo is better than the fake guys. Can you be that powerful as the media influencer that you have? You have the reach, the power, the influence. You have the tools like never, ever before. I've been a broadcaster for over 30 years. For over 30 years, I have had a microphone, a camera in my face, I started off in sports play-by-play, -play, sports talk interviews, radio disc jockey. Before there were CDs, for those of us that remember CDs, I was doing reel-to-reel -reel and splicing audio. Who would have thought today I would be streaming on multiple platforms in my own studio without the need of a broadcast studio, and I could reach around the world? As a broadcaster, I totally appreciate the new world we live in. I totally understand the power and the strength that we can get here, but you can do the brain, same thing. So here we go. As we think about this now, go back to thinking like a media empire. I want you to write down. I want you to write down and then put in the chat. Put in the chat, how many different channels do you have? Like, I've got two LinkedIn's. I have the... Rich Trigger Bond Trigger one, and I have the Rocks of Stage Media one. I have two Facebook groups or two Facebook pages. I have one for Trigger and I have one for Rich Bond Trigger, one personal, one company. I have a Twitter account. I have a TikTok account. I have, at one point, two YouTube channels. And the math goes on and on. How many different channels do you have? And drop that in the chat for me. Let me, let me just see how big of a reach you could potentially have here. Because here today on Restream, I start with five different channels every time that I go live. And now you're asking, okay, Rich, how many times do you go live? How, how, how many times are you really leveraging the media empire you have? Okay, on an average month, here's an average month. I do 20 episodes of my 2 p.m. live mini show. 20 episodes at... 15 minutes per time, Monday through Friday, I am live every day at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Before this summit, we were using the, that show to help promote the different speakers. But per month, I'm doing a minimum of 20 of those live events. Four times a month, I'm doing How to Rock to Stage Show live streaming. And then I have three National Speakers Association shows that are streaming, going live. I have at least 27, that's a minimum of 27 different shows that I host, run, create, and here's the magic of it, I can replay them just like TV does. People will see me, they will know me, and they'll see me in my best form. I'm a media guy. I'm a TV host. I coach people on how to do the very thing I do every day of my life. 
what a better vehicle for your book, for your business, for your whatever you have. Think what you could do now to leverage yourself as a media brand, not just your company name. Now, let's talk a little bit about the brand story. We're going to get deeper into the brand story this week as well. There's going to be a lot of people talking about you, your brand, and how these different elements all work together. I'm not going to take all of it from everybody, okay? For your brand story. People think of me as Trigger. That's one of my brand story. But I'm going to take you back to the beginning. I grew up with a horrible stutter. A stutter that kept me from stage and mic. I have a stutter that literally, when I read as a kid, all the way back to early preschool, when you read those di Run Dick, Run Jane, Run Dick Jane, when you do those books as a kid, I could not read three or four words at a time without crying, running out of the room, because everyone in the room was laughing at me. The nicknames that I had were the brand I had as a kid. My stutter was a brand that I had. People would call me horrible nicknames. Dick Bontrager, the last name. Thank goodness Trigger came along, by the way. But Bontrager has been butchered so many ways that it was embarrassing because they never used my real name. They pretended like they were stuttering, and then they would imitate my name in horrible ways. That was my brand all the way through middle school. Think about that for a second. Those are the formative years of life. Those are the years that kept me out of dramas. Asking a girl out. Do you know how hard it is for a stutterer to ask a girl out? The first thing you want to do when you go out and ask a girl out is you want to walk up with confidence and you want to say, hi. And then they go, hi, I'm Susie. And I go, hi, I'm. And it won't come out. I can't say rich. I, I could not say rich. So to say I was a geek that couldn't speak, and that was my brand. That's all anyone knew about this guy that had creative ideas. He had aspirations. Well, my stutter and I finally came to terms with each other. And this is a speaker trick for help everyone here as well, not just stutters. What I had to do was I had to figure out the speed of my brain, the speed of my mouth, and I had to have them come in the bounds together so I could present because the knowledge I have in my head is vast. When, when they tried to put me into the developmental schools, my, my dad would say, my kid's not dumb. He just can't say anything. <laughs> when I figured out how to do that, my brand changed. My brand became the guy that was funny, that had a sense of great knowledge and wisdom. Then I did get into some drama. Then I did get into student radio. Then I did get into actually getting on a radio station. Despite the fact in college, my college professor said, is he still believed in no brand? He still believed in the stutter. My college professor said, Rich, you have a great voice, but no one will ever hire you because you can't read the news. Pay attention. To this day, I am not a news journalism. I do not call myself a journalist. I'm a broadcaster. I cannot take a copy of news and read it. Hi, it's a 10 o'clock news and five are dead in a horrific car accident. I cannot do that because I will cry or stutter because it's too gut-wrenching for me, and I don't like reading someone else's words. Instead, I got in the sports play-by-play -play and talk show host, and I found out I could ad-lib. I could be myself. I could relax. And that became the new brand, and then Trigger was born. And since then, Trigger has been around for over 36 years now. I'm celebrating 36 years in professional broadcasting. Trigger now is the brand, and there's over six pages of Google that point you back to Rich Trigger Bond Trigger. And that, you know what I still talk about to this day? I still talk about the stutter and the transformation because that's what people want to hear. They want to hear your brand story. They want to hear how you got from here to here. What is your brand story? What is the path that makes you unique? When people introduce me on stage, the ending line usually is something along the lines of this, and now here to help you speak better, Stand out from the crowd. Here is the professional coach, expert, and he stutters for a living, Rich Trigger Bond Trigger. And people laugh when I come on stage every time because they think the first thing I'm going to do is dip, 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 dip. Hi, everybody. Instead, I go out and I hit a home run. 
the brand story is now amplified by the guy that used to not be able to speak. It's now he coaches people to speak. What is your brand story? If you can figure that brand story out, my brand story now is I hope you shine on camera, shine on stage to elevate you and your brand authority so you can be seen as a go-to expert. And that's what we're doing all week long here. That's what we're doing all week with the Standout Summit. We're literally helping people do that very thing, equipping them, allowing them to shine and help you so you can shine brighter. The other thing you want to learn, and we're going to talk about this, so I'm not going to crush someone else's thunder this week, but you do need to learn how to talk in sound bites. When you're being interviewed, when you are being put on someone else's show, the number one thing that ruins a show is you giving bad answers. You need to know your brand story. You need to know some clear sound bites that you always get the hook. You will always get the laugh. When people ask people, when they say, Trigger, what makes you unique? And I say, I used to stutter for a living. They're like, you did not. And then I give them a little snippet on it. Or when people check me out on my virtual shows, they always want to know if this is a real room or if this is fake. And they're like, your hands aren't ghosted. How do you do that? This is where you now get to shine and give good answers on interviews. Two quick tips, and I'll let you save this for one of our other speakers this week, but two tips if you're going to be interviewed, it's a great way to grow and amplify your brand. Number one, replay the reruns of your interviews. And you're going to think, that's nuts. I was interviewed, it's done, it's over with. No, 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 no. You want to reuse those interviews because not everyone heard them the first time. Put them on your website page. Put them on your YouTube channel. But replay those interviews because they will amplify you over and over again. And the other tip I'll give you, when the host is winding down your interview, one of the best thing you do to highlight yourself and your brand authority is shut up. Yes. At the end of the show, they're going to give your social links. They're going to give your next speaking gig. They're going to talk about your book for you. They're going to wrap that interview up with everything you wanted them to say. Too many people jump on one more time and over talk the host. And that great, marvelous ending is completely screwed up. If you want your brand, your brand authority to shine at the end of the interview, you just need to do one thing. And everyone can do this. This is 100%. Everyone can do this. You just got to smile at the end of the interview. When they're wrapping everything up, nod your head. Smile at the end of the interview, and it will be a home run every single time. I want to wrap up with one other story of media that will help you understand how you can amplify you and your brand beyond measure today. We have the opportunity, like never before, to show you as an expert in your field. The very first time reruns were ever started was Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz. I Love Lucy. I Love Lucy was a smash hit. It was at NBC. And Lucy and Desi had their own production company. The show had been going. It was already a big, big, big hit. And what happened was they literally were talking at home one night, and they literally said, what if we did a replay? What if we had our show go back and they could watch it all over again. No one had ever done that before Lucy. And they did the first ever replay of early episodes. Because back in that day, you would air it once. And many of the shows were deleted, lost. There, there are no rerun tapes for early, early broadcast TV. They literally created the concept of a rerun. Think about some of the biggest rerun shows ever. MASH was not an early success when MASH hit. MASH became a hit after the three years. They went into syndication and became a rerun hit after your late night news. And MASH exploded in prime time and on late night. Star Trek is celebrating almost 60 years of Star Trek. And it's in reruns. And then they have different versions and different versions. And those versions have reruns. And it goes on and on. You have content. You have content right now as a go-to expert that you may not be leveraging because you are not putting in the reruns. Right now, the biggest thing out there is shorts. Take a short clip from one of your 
interviews, from one of your shows, from one of your instructional videos, make a quick little short, 15, 30, 67 is max. Play that great sound bite. You get to pick your own sound bites. Put that sound bite and have a link in there that draws it back to the full content. It goes back to YouTube. It goes back to your TikTok. And you can repost this on different platforms. You can do reruns on many platforms now. This is how you become a media brand em empire. This is how you stand out from the noise. This is how you literally say, hi, I'm the new Colonel Sanders of XYZ industry. I'm, I'm the new Walt Disney of XYZ industry. When you learn the media skills, when you learn the things that I coach, that you will show up on camera, you will be engaging, you will know how to story tell, you know how to repurpose and repackage old material. Some of the biggest replay hits I'm getting right now on my TikTok are things that I did 60 years ago in Georgia. <laughs> We're repurposing old content, putting a new wrapper on it, and people are clicking and loving it because it's not outdated. It's great content. What are you going to do over the course of this week with the Standout Summit? With all the different speakers we're going to have, what are you going to do to build your media empire and launch off in a new direction so you stand out in 2023?